You're listening to a new episode of Girl Damn Podcast with your host, me, Aeon. So sit back, relax, and listen as I unpack the uncertainty of my 30s one episode at a time. What is going on, y'all? Do I sound different? I've taken my own advice, and I've invested into some microphone equipment, so I hope I sound better. But welcome back to another episode of Girl Down Podcast with me, Aeon. First of all, I want to thank Maddie Rants for joining me on the last episode where we got to talk about drag race and everything about Drag Race. And I'm just so happy that we were able to record that episode and the reception has been positive. So I just want to thank Maddie and thank all of you all just for being open for me doing something a little different. Let me apologize for the the long gaps between episodes. So I can finally announce that at the end of this month, the 31st, I will be leaving my current job. For those of you who have been listening to me, you know that within the past couple of months, my job has been the source of a lot of stress and unhappiness, and I'm so happy to be closing the chapter on this situation and moving into a space where I will be doing work that I'm excited about, that I'll be working around people who I'm excited to work with and who are genuinely happy to have me a part of their team and that I'm just moving in a direction and so many changes are going to happen in addition to the job in my personal life that I'm just really excited about and I'm ready to step through so many doors. So yeah, that that's kind of why I've been away from the mic, just trying to get my life together. Also, I had the opportunity to go to LA for the first time and go on vacation. LA was not what I thought it was going to be because it was cold. The weekend that I was there, the temperatures were, it was like in the 50s and the 40s. So thank God I brought my jackets with me, but I I made the best of the vacation. I had a car, I had my own place, I got an Airbnb. So I was able to be a tourist and sightsee and just drive around and just be in the city and feel the vibes. And I got to see some of my girlfriends. Shout out to my um, my close sister, Love Taji. Um, shout out to Never Ending Nina. I have to get her on the show soon. And I'm just, I'm just happy that I got to have sisterhood. I got to do a couple of the things that I wanted to do. I got to go dip my toes into the Pacific Ocean, which was really important for me. And I definitely plan to go back to California in the future. Hopefully the temperature will be hotter, but I got to, I got to go hiking. I got, I I got to do enough stuff. So, and I, I got to say that at least I've been to California. So, yeah, I'm just trying. I'm just trying to live life. I-, I feel so many changes happening. I feel so many elevations and shifts happening. So I'm just, honey, I'm just trying to be prepared. Definitely, before I get started on today's topic, um, however, I want to acknowledge the life of Elise Mallory. She was a, a figure in the trans community in Chicago. Uh, unfortunately, she was she was reported uh, dead uh, a couple of days ago. And Elisa Mallory, black trans woman, I didn't know her intimately in Chicago. I knew of her when I lived in Chicago, and we bumped into each other at a couple of community events. And I had people that people that I was more familiar with that knew her. However, when I was on Box Number Five Small Podcast, she was somebody that was a 
a monthly financial supporter of the podcast. She had a, a monthly subscription where she financially poured into the work um, that me and my former co-host did. And she, and not too many girls do that. So I'm very, very appreciative of her believing uh, in my work, believing in me, uh, sending words of encouragement, encouraging us to go on. Um, she was only 31 years old, taken from us, and I just hope her soul is at peace. Life is, you never know why things happen, or you never know why the chips fall where they may, and we always try to find meaning in everything, but seeing how the community has um, come together in support of her, and just keeping her memory alive, um, that, you know, I... I hope that she did not pass in vain and that we can all learn something from her advocacy, um, her uh, her desire to serve the community, to stand up for black trans women, for trans people and trans rights. And I can say that she will, her presence will truly be missed. Um, but definitely want to give a shout out to Elise Mallory, um, somebody who was a supporter of the show. So... What do I want to talk about today? Well, let's talk about what I've been watching on TV and actually how... So, I've been watching a lot of TV. And ironically, the TV that I've been watching, there's been embedded messages in the shows that have, have inadvertently propelled me to make certain decisions that... I'm going to have to make in the that I've made recently and that, I, that I'm going to have to make in the next couple of months to really uh, set myself up for the future and also decisions regarding uh, personal relationships. But I just I know this is going to sound weird, but just roll with me, be with me. So three, two series that I just finished watching. Um, I just finished watching La Benino on HBO Max. Uh, shout out to my friends Ken and Dara who've been begging me to watch La Benino on on HBO Max for the longest, but I just been putting it off. But I finally got the time to just sit down and um, take it in. And basically, La Benino is about a trans woman from Spain, Christina La Benino Ortiz, who was kind of like this visible figure in the 90s she would go on these talk shows and basically while she got visibility on the talk shows they exploited her but the series the series shows her story her life story uh and is related to somebody writing a book about her and her having to recount her life story and it was it was so good it was so it was like if anybody wants to write a trans story going forward, that needs to be the basis. That needs to be the, the foundation because the story in and of itself was so full. It was so nuanced. It was so rich. But so were the other trans characters in the story. It, you could definitely tell the trans people were behind the camera. I also watched... The Wu Tang show that's on Hulu. So there's a a show that's on Hulu that documents the formation of the hip hop group Wu Tang Clan. Uh, it has Dave East in it, who I think is sexy as fuck. Um, I love him. Who plays Method Man? Uh, it's told from the story of the leader of the Wu Tang Clan, RZA, but it basically shows how he how the group came to prominence with their first album but it is it, also a lesson in the business dynamics of how of how he basically set himself and the rest of his group members up for success uh coming from their situations in Staten Island with most of them being in the the drug trade but it's a really good show you should go watch that and I also watched uh, unsung, no, Uncensored, which comes on TV One. Now, I didn't watch it on TV One. I watched it on YouTube. But Uncensored is basically like, it's kind of like a, a behind the music documentary series. But the series, the, it kind of recounts the, the, the subjects 
life, but it really it is is not in chronological order. It just talks about significant things that have happened in a person's life to get them but it's not like this chronological they were born here and they signed this record deal here and this went to number one and they like it's you basically you can tell that the people are just asking them questions and they're taking stories from things that happened to them and using them to answer the questions and Keisha Cole was one of the subjects in the, one of the most recent episodes. And it was a really, 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 really good episode. So, just to keep this brief, because you know the show is brief, and I like to get straight to the point. What did I learn from each of these shows that that come from all sides of, of the room? Like, how, how, how am I using the lessons that I learned in these shows to propel me forward? Wu, I think Wu Tang is the 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 most pivotal right now. So in Wu Tang, particularly in the second season, when there's like this buzz around their song "Protect Your Neck," and basically what happens is it, a bidding war happens amongst all of these record companies, right? And all of these record companies want to sign Wu Tang Clan, but it's always a caveat: it's we want to sign you, but we want to have ultimate artistic control of how we're going to package you. And like, we like the music that you're doing, but we have this plan so we can make you palatable for white America. And we'll give you all of this money, but you just have to listen to us and follow our rules. And RZA, AKA Bobby, uh, in the first season of the show, he got like a singles contract and he played the game, but ultimately he sold out and they ended up dropping him. So he, when the resurgence happens again with Wu-Tang, he already has this awareness of what, what, you, what could possibly happen if you sell your soul to the devil. And also during this time when there's this bidding war, into, with all of the members, they're struggling financially and they kind of, their backs are against the wall because... They need money. It's different stuff that's happening in their lives. Babies are being had. Rent is due. The pressure to sell drugs on the street is a thing. But Bobby ends up turning down. I think they had offers from like Def Jam, uh, Electra, and some other big labels. And they, and they ultimately ended up going with the smaller record label, Loud Records. But the benefit of, even though... Loud Records was smaller. I think the other record labels were offering them like two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars to um to sign a contract. Lau only offered sixty thousand dollars, but what Lau could offer them was full creative control, full creative control over the music, the product production, and their image, and also Lau only signed the group itself. The 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 contract didn't entail them signing the group and the members as individual artists, which then gave the the individual artists, once they blew up as a group, to go back and negotiate their own individual contracts for whatever price they wanted um, with these other labels with no strings attached. And RZA came into conflict with his group because... Since he had been in this situation before, he was able to see the long game and he was able to see the bigger picture. And then there's another side issue because ODB wanted to sign with Def Jam because of the the name brand recognition and you know what that means for rappers and what that means for black people to be on Def Jam. But Def Jam ultimately... I, what was the... Stip it was some type of stipulation. Oh... It was some type of stipulation in the contract where Def Jam, even though they would have offered ODB like all of this money from the solo contract, uh, they would have kept control of the masters for in, in perpetuity forever. And Bobby made the decision, which which we're just going to see is going to cause conflict on the third season. He made the executive decision to sign with Electra which I think was the same amount of money as Def Jam. Didn't have the name recognition in the, like, the urban streets or the hip-hop streets, but it he got the same amount of money, but after 20 years, 
his ownership of his masters will revert back to ODB and his family, which owning your masters as a musician is a, a very big thing because that means if you make a successful record and it's in the zeitgeist, then it can always be used over and over again or sampling that the person that actually made the art will be able to profit from it other than these record labels. It, it, it was a very interesting, very deep um, layer story, but it applied to me because in leaving my job and just courting different situations, um, because I'm working at a, because I'm working where I'm working, this is the most money that I'm ever making. And because I'm a public interest lawyer, um, the rates, you know, they're not going to be as high as where I'm at now, but investing in myself and investing in my vision and investing in my career trajectory, um, means that I'm gonna have to play the long game. And sometimes you have to take less in the, the present time so that you can get more in the future. And when I was just seeing the storyline in season two play out and seeing Rizza have to um, make those decisions which were uncomfortable because he knew um, he knew the struggles of his group members, but he, he wanted them to keep their eye on a prize. Sometimes you have to play that long game so you can have more control of your career con- your career trajectory and so that you can be um, free. And that's definitely the situation that I'm trying to work for. I want to be I want to be free to make as much money as I want to make, but I ultimately want control of what my career looks like, what direction I look what direction that it moves in and and I just feel like in my present situation I don't have that. I don't I don't have people that are looking out for my uh, best interest. So I'm I'm really appreciative of that show. Keisha Cole. Towards the end of Keisha Cole's Uncensored, the conversation about her mom comes up. Now, if anybody, I'm pretty sure that if you listen to this show, you know Keisha Cole's mom, Frankie. I believe she passed last year. And Keisha Cole's mom, Frankie, had a... Uh, she was. She had a public battle with uh, uh, drug addiction, right? And Keisha, Keisha was just recalling like early in her fame. She thought that if she would become famous and that if she would make all this money and if, that she was able to do things for her family, that it would automatically change her situation. And she was saying how after her mom has passed and how she's finding peace is she's having to let go and realize no matter what she would have done, no matter how much successful she was or more successful that she was going to be, um, her mom's life is going to be her mom's life. Her siblings' lives is going to be their life. And no amount of money would, would, would be able to fix or change those things or motivate those people to act right so she could have this perfect um, picture. And once she was able to accept that, she was able to just free herself. And now she's at the point where she's just living her life for her. And she's just trying to get back to the, the passion of her music. And that really touched me because... Currently, I'm going through a situation with my mom. Clearly, my mom is not on drugs or alcohol. But now that the trans stuff is settled and done, my mother and I, and I'll probably do a Patreon about it uh, behind the paywall. But my mother and I, we're just going through stuff in our relationship. And I have these fantasies that, well, if I make this amount of money and I'm able to to pay my mama's house off or I'm able to, or even not my mom, my friends as well too. Like if I'm able to make all this money and give them all this money and give them these opportunities, then that will make it better. And it's not money does not fix issues. Money does not fix problems. People will still have issues. People, and ultimately people have to want to take responsibility for their own lives, for their own directions, and whether they do or whether they don't, that's not a reflection on you. All you can do is control yourself, and that's something that I'm learning to. I'm learning to let go. I'm learning to relinquish a lot of that, and just make sure that I'm good and I take care of me because money doesn't change everything. Money does not change everything. And again, I was so happy that I watched that because that that message really hit home for me because. 
particularly with your parents and your your close circle, you want to help your people when you get on. And I, I'm in a situation where I'm doing well financially, all things considered, and I want to be able to help. But in the back of my mind, I know just throwing money at a situation is just not going to fix the situation. And that change is just going to have to be in that person. And whether they do or not, that's going to be a reflection of them. And all I can do is just live my life for me and create the environment that I want to be in for myself and just meet people where they're at and just keep it moving. So, La Benino. I think what I learned from La Benino. So, all throughout the the mini series of La Benino, you you see La Benino or Christina. She yearned for the love and uh, the the love and acceptance of her mother. And even when her mother, I just want to say throughout the duration of that show, her whole family was trash to her. I know it was the 90s, and the, but her family was still complete and utter trash. But again, I think this kind of relates to the Keisha Cole thing. And I, I don't think that I needed to be learned this lesson, although I needed to be re, a reminded of this lesson. You could be successful. You could give opportunities to people. You could give money to people. You could also you could consider people all you want to in regards to. But in regards to your transness, if your family or your friend or your man does not see it, there is no amount of nice. There is no amount of money. If they just if they don't see it, they don't see it. Cut your loss. In my in my situation. I would have cut my losses and lived my life because um, Christina Labanino, even though she lacked the love of her mom and her family, she had the love of the community and the love of the girls. And not and every girl doesn't get that. Every doesn't every girl doesn't have a, a community of other transsexual women where you're able to age together. You have trans women that do right for you and in her quest in La Benino's quest for love which was her downfall her quest from love from her family and these men that turn her out every chance they get she shitted on Paca she sit on all her other sisters that were there for her that held her down that gave her a place to stay when she got out of jail that were there for her when she died that wanted to celebrate her and wanted to celebrate her as Christina um I don't know, it, but but you could just tell that Christina, even in the the dead naming and the misgendering, and her mom just her mom just being garbage to her from the beginning, she still craved and wanted that attention from her mother. But I think had she would have had the tools to cut that off, she could have been a, a way more better friend to the sisters. Um, and the people that are around her that loved her for who she was and that saw her for exactly um, who she was. She could have been a friend, better friend to Manolito. Um, and, you know, you know, pe you, people are, you, you can't, I don't believe in you can love the hate out of people. I just, I just don't believe that. I, I, to me, it's, it's all, what is it, a low sum game? I don't know. I just want to focus on the people that fuck with me. And if you come around, you come around. Um, I have this, I, ha I only have one situation where I have a family member that's like, that I was close to, but that reminds me of Lobin and O's mom. And I, like, I'm not, I'm not extending the olive branch. I, I have a, for all intents and purposes, I have a good life and I don't have nothing to prove to nobody. Right? And I choose to focus on the people in my life that always show up for me, the people that are always there for me. And uh, the story was just a reaffirmation of that, to just pay attention to the people that are around you that are pouring into you. So that's all that I got. I hope I hope this inspired y'all to watch some of those shows. 
Um, right now, I'm going through... I, I have a Disney Plus subscription because I, I'm watching the Pearl Family Show, which I think is a key key. It's just as funny as the original series. But now, I'm getting into my Disney bag and watching all of these Disney movies and Pixar movies. So, I, I'm just... I'm trying to get into my bag, but... That's all I got. What are y'all watching? What have you learned? Uh, be free. Feel free to send an email to girldownpodcast at gmail.com. Write something on Twitter. Hashtag girldown, girldownpodcast or hashtag GDP. And I will see y'all on the next episode. Bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of Girl Down Podcast with me, Aeon. If you like the show, please be sure to go on over to Apple Podcasts and rate and review this podcast. Also, make sure that you're engaging with me on social media. Also, if you have any inquiries or you want to send me any questions, be sure to email me at girldownpodcast at gmail.com. Until next time, bye, (laughs) y'all.